And example six, a manufacturer sells watches for $50 per unit. Again, remember that's revenue, not profit, so no one cares. The fixed costs related to this product are $10,000 per month and variable costs are $30 per unit. So how much will the company make if they sell 300 watches per month? And when we talk about how much will the company make, we are talking about profit. And so I wrote this problem to intentionally skip a few steps to sort of make you think about how we can get a result there. And so to get to the profit, what we need <clears throat> first is a revenue function and a cost function. And then we need to remember that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So let's go ahead and crank up a revenue and cost function for this one. Revenue, it looks like they sell the watch for $50 per unit. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, I really care about revenue. No, you don't, because if you're selling the watch for 50, but it costs you 60 to make it, you are losing money. Your profit is negative $10 for every single one that you sell. So again, revenue does not matter to anyone. Profit is all that matters. That's the only reason a business exists is to make profit. So our uh, cost function would be the variable costs first, which is $30 per unit or $30 for one more. Another word for that is marginal cost or slope. And then the fixed costs are $10,000 per unit. So now that I have the revenue and the cost, I can get a profit function from that, remembering that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So with profit being re equal to revenue minus cost, I've got profit is equal to my revenue, which is 50X minus, and it's very important to remember that parenthesis right there. Uh, cost in this case is 30X plus 10,000. And so I can go ahead and give that to Wolfram. I could probably do that in my head actually. So if you were to give that to Wolfram, you would get 20X minus 10,000. And as I've mentioned in previous problems, this minus 10,000 right here is representative of the money we have to pay before we ever start making a profit. And so we need to sell enough units at $20 each to pay off that $10,000 before we start actually making $20 on each one of those things that we sell, in this case, watches. So uh, they are going to sell 300 watches. And so let's go ahead and take our profit function, give it to Wolfram and put 300 in there and see what happens. So our profit function is 20 times X, which in this case is 300 minus 10,000. I'm going to predict this is bad for the company. Yes, it's actually very bad for the company. They are losing $4,000 a month by doing this. Oops. So selling 300 watches each month results in a loss of $4,000. The company is not going to last very long unless they do something about this. The things that they could do about it are maybe increasing the price of their watch or finding a way to sell more watches. How many watches must the company uh, sell in order to cover costs and break even. And so we are going to use the profit function again for that. We could use uh, revenue is equal to cost if we wanted to. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So I know that profit, uh, or sorry, I know that break even occurs when profit is zero or when revenue is equal to cost. I could use either one. For me today, I'll use revenue is equal to cost. And we'll see <clears throat> what happens. This will help us be able to advise the company and tell them, hey, you need to be able to sell this many of these things in order to break even, or you are going to go out of business. So we've got X is equal to 500. And so the company needs to produce and sell 500 watches in order to break even. I'm going to do this shorthand. I would expect sort of complete sentences from you folks and all of that, but to break even, sell <clears throat> 500 watches. 
Alrighty. That's it for that example. We'll be back with the next in just a moment.